Hi, everybody. It's Russ from My Hammers 11. I hope you are all safe and well. New to your channel, please consider subscribing, hitting the bell icon so you get so you're notified as soon as we put new content on. We have videos, interviews going up daily, but sometimes two, three times a, a day. And everyone is, is brilliant. I won't want you to miss any of the memories, any of the stories that are coming out. So make sure you hit that bell icon. Um, I mean, today's guest goes without saying. <laughs> He's, I mean, you know, he is one of the greatest servants of the club. You know, I did the maths beforehand and including sort of playing youth team football all the way until his ambassadorial role. It's of almost 50 years with the club. You get less for murder nowadays, Tone. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's Tony, it's, well, it's Tony Carr. How absolutely are you? Absolutely frightening when you say it like that. Yeah. It, is, it is. I mean, I obviously, 41, yeah. 41 years academy director and then obviously the ambassador. Role. But then I forgot the youth team stuff as well. And, and obviously you're, you're a, a pro yeah. of the club for a couple of years. So yeah, I did it all together. I think it's 48 years. So yeah, that's quite yeah. scary. Oh dear. How are you? Yeah. How's, how's the lockdown for you? I know everyone asks that question, but how's lockdown treating you? Uh, well, yeah, it's been tough. Obviously, um, you know, we're all confined to barracks, so to speak. And, um, but, you know, I've been, I like my garden, so I get out of the garden and mess about there. And the, the wife's always finding me little jobs to do here and there. So, um, yeah, I, it's one of those things you, you've got to have a mindset. Well, there's not a lot I can do. I just got to get on with it. So just yeah. try and make the best of it. And, you know, it's been okay, really, to be honest. It's, uh, I'm dying to get out and get to a pub and have a pint properly. But uh, other than that, no, it's been okay. Yeah. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. But, you know, we've only got, you know, a week, a week to go and it all kicks off, apparently. The old Premier League's back. So, well, you know, I've been quite relaxed the last three months because there's been no football results. It's when, uh, when I watch the Amos, the Amos play, I get panicky because I thought, oh, dear, oh, dear, I'm never confident. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm there the you same. go. That's supporting West Ham, I suppose. Exactly. I mean, that's the same as me. You know, the last hundred yeah. day, hundred days or so, it's been nice. You know, um, and now it's getting a bit yeah. close to it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, no, no lead be... tables to look at. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no lead tables. Oh, it's going to be. Yeah, exactly. I think mean, it's going to be tight. I think uh, it's, it's still work to be done for for the lads, and um, but I'm sure, and I hope they can come through it. Yeah. No, I'm. I'm I really I'm, do. I'm actually, in a weird way, quietly confident about it all because being a being closed, you know, closed game. Uh, you, you know, if if some with some players, they're not if they're not particularly strong enough personality wise, they they crumble a little bit. I think when the fans get against them. Yeah, and, yeah, the pressure gets to them. Yes, certainly. And and it yeah. seems looking at the Bundesliga stuff, home advantage means bugger all. Um, I think it's only twenty five percent of games have been won at home. So. We'll see. And, you know, I fancy, you know, well, we, I mean, we all... um, go on, Tone. You say? Yes, I, I hadn't seen that fact. And uh, I'd only, I've not watched a lot of the German, I must admit. But um, certainly, um, you know, 25% wins at home. That's, uh, mm. yeah, that's an interesting stat, really. It is. It is. And I mean, uh, I, you know, I, I mean, I think you're going to see, and when I was talking to Kevin Keane about it, that's what he was saying. He said he, he imagines more of the mid-table teams are going to be dragged into the, the battle. Because you're going to get Norwich's yeah. fancying having a go against City at their gaff because yeah. there's no fans. And so it is what it is, yeah. and it? it is what it is. And yeah, it's going to be weird. Yeah, um, I think it's, it's going to be tough. It's going to be different. But uh, yeah, as you say, it's. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I really do. I'm looking forward to it starting next week. Yeah, it's like it'd be like the World Cup. There'll be like all these games all the time. You know, we haven't, we've, been, we've been starved of football, and now we're just yeah. going to get this little yeah, deluge. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. You mentioned it. You mentioned it, Tone. Obviously, yeah, it'll be a tsunami of football. <laughs> exactly, and 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 the housewives of Britain are gonna are gonna hate it, you know. But it is what it is, you know. That they've, we've we've done Netflix. <laughs> we've done we've done all of them now. It's our turn now. So uh, no, it'll be good fun. I'm looking forward yeah. to it. Now, obviously, you a million mentioned... films on Netflix. I tell you that. <laughs> I know. I'm get. It's almost like Netflix. You're going through it now, and it's like at the beginning, you're like brilliant. All this stuff to watch. Now you're like, oh. There's nothing, there's nothing on telly, is there? There's no, like, nothing live. Everything's, like, recorded and no. they're rerunning everything. They've got to rerun, you know, Euro 96 yeah. and all the football. It just shows you, you know, how much we rely on, on live yeah. stuff being filmed. But, um, no, it's, 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 uh, it is is yeah. what it is, as you said. Yeah. Nothing, nothing to do about it. Just got to carry on. Keep calm and carry on and carry on supporting West Ham. So, obviously, you, Tony, you know, as you said, you know, the hammers and, and stuff like that. The first question I, question I always ask all the ex-players, but I, I'll ask you as well, is, but even before that, because obviously you're a youth team player, so, you know, 
why was West Ham your club, Tone? Why, why were you West Ham? I suppose it was to do with where I was brought up. I was brought up in Bow in East London. Yeah. So, uh, and I lived on a council estate. And, uh, you know, two stops, I was, my nearest station was just a walk up the road, it was probably by Bow Station. Oh, yeah. So, like, two stops up the road is Upton Park. Yeah. So, everybody in that at that time was West Ham fans, or most of them. There was a few mm. Arsenal, but mostly West Ham. So, that was it, you know. My family weren't, my mum and dad really weren't into sport or football. So, it was just the lads on the estate, you know. It was, um, we got into football, playing football on the, on the green, and uh, ended up, you know, West Ham ended up being my team, purely because they were the local team. <laughs> Simple as that. And that don't happen very often nowadays, does it? I mean, you know, it, it's, it, you know... Every, no, it don't. And so it's... it's, uh, And I think that's that's what comes across, you know, and particularly the fans I talk to, you know, I, I don't call them old, I call them experienced fans and less experienced fans. The more experienced fans, not the older ones, but, the, you know, they they came from the area and they might have moved out into Essex or, or over in the States or whatever. Yeah. But it, it seems that group, you know, that's... When people talk about the West Ham family and West Ham community, it is, it is just amazing and i've i've I, this this whole channel has come up you know it's it's snowballed because so many of fans were like oh yeah you should interview this guy you should interview this guy and i got this guy and there's all these stories are coming up and then as you said you and the council estate boys going to football and it became it was just a, th- a thing you did weren't it it was like it wasn't necessarily yeah. the football, but it was more about going with the boys and going with the lads yeah well when i was back when i was about 11 i was you know started to go yeah. My old granddad, he, God rest his soul, he used to uh, sell the, the football papers outside the ground, you know, the football specials, where all the pictures was on the newspapers. So he'd always give me a free newspaper. And then some days we'd, go, we'd get to the ground very early. We'd get there about 11 o'clock. And where all the deliveries and all the drinks and all the food was coming in, we'd bunk in, you know, we'd, <laughs> we'd bunk in and hide up in the cage in the North Bank until t- t- the gates opened up past one. So... Uh, you know, we were little rascals, really, but um, no, it was just that way of getting to watch the match, you know. Exactly. That was, that was what it was. Yeah. Exactly. That's brilliant. That is brilliant. And obviously, then you became, you was a youth team player, obviously, then for a couple of seasons, then you got yeah. pro. Got pro. Um, you know, obviously, a lot of people don't know, the less experienced fans don't know sort of your story, so to speak. So, if, no, I, sure. if, I, if I go over history, I'm not being condescending or anything. So, obviously, and then you went Barnet, obviously, the injury, and then at the age of 23, you become director of youth development at West Ham. How the, how the hell did that happen? Well, basically, it, um, it, did, it wasn't quite that at that time. Yeah, I, became, yeah. I eventually yeah. became the director of uh, the youth academy. But um, I was, while it was part-time, and I was working full-time coaching in schools. Yeah. In two schools in North London, really. All Arsenal and Tottenham Territory. Holloway School and um, and uh, Woodbury Down School, yeah. and we used to go to Fairlop every day from Woodbury Down on the coach, and the resident coach at the centre at Fairlop, uh, Oakfield Sports Centre, was John Dick, ex yeah. West Ham striker, yeah. Scottish international, Johnny Dick, and I was good mates with John. You know, see him every day. He used to come and you know help take our groups, and um, he was working part time for West Ham, and. Um, there was going to be a change. I didn't notice at the time. And, and West Ham wanted him to work on Sundays. But he didn't want to work Sundays because he already ran a little team on a Sunday. So he, he packed it in. And I think he recommended me to John, John Lyle. Yeah. And I got, a, I got a, a, a call out of the blue from John, basically saying, you know, I heard you've been injured and you were trying to recover from your injury. Um, do you want to come do a little bit of part-time coaching at West Ham on a on a Tuesday and Thursday night? Take a team on a Saturday and a Sunday morning, and um, I accepted it. Ten pound a week. Yeah, that was that was what it was. And um, the, the Sunday thing, no one's ever said uh, it was John Dick that put my name for. But I'm almost ninety-nine yeah. percent certain it was it was John yeah. Yeah. that uh, that did it. And the Sunday team was because at that time he wasn't allowed West Ham or any professional club wasn't allowed to run teams at schoolboy level. Okay. You could train the players, but you mm-hmm. couldn't run teams. So what West Ham did, because they felt they had a little good little group, they wanted to run an under-16 team 
on a Sunday morning under the guise of Poplar Boys Club. So we got all the boys to join Poplar Boys Club. So I worked for the club on Sunday mornings for with Poplar Boys Club, but really it was West Ham's under 16s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's how we got round it. And in that group, my very, very first group I ever took was um, Alan Kirbishley and Paul Brush and, and uh, a young lad named Pat Creasy, um, who sadly died in a car crash many years, you know, a few years later he, at, when he was an apprentice at West Ham. So... Uh, that, but that's how it started, and as I as I went through the part time, and then eventually became full time in 1980, just after West Ham won the cup, yeah. against Arsenal, as we you all know, uh, John asked me to come full time, and it was then I started to develop and be more in charge of the youth academy and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Wow. So it was it was a gradual uh, a gradual uh, progression. Yeah. I wasn't yeah. director of football, <laughs> director <laughs> of the youth academy at 13. I was. Assistant to Ronnie Boyce as an assistant youth coach. Yeah, but still, Boyce, I mean, he was full time youth coach at that time. Yeah, but yeah. still, I mean, it's like it must be like obviously the the the, the playing career stopped, and obviously you know you you love the game, and to get John phone yeah. you up and say, "Hey, it must have been like you know, you know, it's like <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll have some of that." Yeah. And again, I'll say again, it, it completely out of the blue. Um, yeah. And to be honest, I would. I wasn't enjoying playing at that time. And I know I was only quite young. I wasn't, I'd had a few disappointments, a few knockbacks. Mm. I'd had the injury, which was long and drawn. And I wasn't enjoying playing. But I was still coaching and loved the coaching. Mm. So when John came back to me, I thought, well, what a challenge. You know, I didn't make it as a player at West Ham, but to go back there as a coach, perhaps I can make this as, you know, a reasonable success. So that day, it was my club. I didn't hesitate, to be honest. So that's that's how my path started. And when you and, and then you know yeah. a typical typical Tony saying reasonable success, reasonable success. Um, I mean you are you know I yeah, mean well you, you know it's... <laughs> I mean you know people say you know you, you're one of the most most influential guys in, in it was in English football. Obviously you're an MBE as well. You're recognised in 2010. You know that's that's not yes. bad success, is it? You know I mean <laughs> you talk about some of the players. I mean you mentioned your first lot. You know yeah it's not bad. Russia. Not uh... nah. Not bad. I mean, you mentioned first year of AFC. Yeah, you know, as I curves. said, it's not, uh, go on, carry on. Say yeah, that. yeah, and um, and as you say, you know, when I look back now, I say not bad for from a boy from Bow. You know, no. come out of a council estate in Bow, so I didn't do too bad in the end. No, not not too so, bad. Yeah, that was that was the journey, and, and yeah, and I, and I and I did enjoy it, and um, but I think my one of my um, I believe uh, one of my reasons for my longevity mm. and, and to a degree the success was I never took it for granted. Sure. I really never took it for granted. I, 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 I sincerely say that. I always, it was always the next challenge and it was always, where's the next player and how can I get better? And, you know, how can I, I, I always, con- because I, I didn't make it as a player in inverted commas, mm. you know, I didn't play for West Ham's first team. I always felt I had to prove something. Sure, I get because that. I wasn't an ex first team player. I always yeah. felt I had to prove something. So I was constantly, you know, never sort of sitting back and going, "Well, I've done well there. That I do." Mm. I, I, I never, ever, ever felt like that. And, it, yeah. and I think that set me in good stead, really. Oh, it did. I mean, you know, if you obviously you mentioned the first, the you know, first batch, you know, under sixteens at Poplar Boys, you know, you had Curbs and, and Brushy, and it's like, you know, you look back, and I was, I was doing obviously a little bit of research, and you know, four England captains, you know, have come through your academy. Yeah, which you know, and you yeah. know, so Incy well, and Rio and Frank and JT. Yeah, I think Incy was the one that you know initially because he was the first black captain ever of England. Yeah, yeah. and I think you know for him to do that from his background and where he's come from and because he was a great player in he for all the, the hoo-ha when he left he was a great player mm. um, but um, I'm, I'm quite proud that I helped him along his way a little bit and, and was hopefully a little bit of a good influence on him John was his biggest mentor John Lyle was his biggest yeah. mentor and I think that was the hullabaloo it was around John being sacked um, yeah. since he you know John was without being over sentimental, John was a little bit of a father figure to him, yep. without a shadow of a doubt, the big mentor. And I think he, he was really, really choked and upset that John had been sacked. Mm. And um, and obviously that 
he had a mindset at that time, I want to get away. So, um, and obviously we know the rest. Yeah, we do. <laughs> but, I but mean, obviously, I know. And that, that's, that's life. That's life and that's West Ham, isn't it? You know, when, when, our, when our sort of war song is yeah. things fading and dying, you know, it's, it's the West Ham way, isn't it? So, you know, it is what it yeah. is. But I mean, you know, it was, yeah. as well as them, you had, you know, yeah, God, you had people like, obviously, Joe, you had Carrick, you had TC, Defoe, Glenn Johnson, all went on to be England internationals. In fact, obviously, that 2010, when you was got your MBE, yeah. which was amazingly well-deserved, That's that World Cup squad, a third of the World Cup squad, roughly, Thank you. Were, were from your, were from your uh, academy. Yeah. It's incredible. I've it's coached, incredible. and I, you know, it wasn't just in West Ham. I've I know, coached yeah, them. Yeah, I know. Yeah, and right. um, I'd work with them as youngsters and, and youth players. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I never thought of that until someone told me about it. So if you realise... I've never thought about it. I never even, well, I didn't, didn't even put that back together. No, no, when I've added it up, I thought, yeah, it's unbelievable. It's, yeah, it's terrific. That's a fact that, you know, there wouldn't be many youth coaches in the country that could claim that, you know. So, yeah, that was something, something different, something special. No. Yeah. And, and obviously, you know... For, culminating for, that year again, that was 2010, exactly. yeah. That's what I mean. It was like an awesome year. And obviously, the year before, you had the testimonial. Yeah. And you had them all there. And even if they yeah, couldn't right. play, that must have been amazing. Because again, you, you, as you said with the England squad, like until someone tells you, until you put it into context, you know, that picture of them all lined up in the, the testimonial, you're like, I was looking at it. It's, a, it's yeah. like a who's who of West Ham and England, isn't it? Really. And it's incredible that the players that have come through. Yeah, there's, there's some players there. So, yeah. And there was a group of players that wasn't in the photo, like the yeah. Tony Cotties and the Paul Allens and the Bobby Barneses. They, they, they were at the game, but obviously they had a photo on the pitch separately, and uh, they weren't in. Like, they weren't in the kit. No. But you know the, the the Chelsea boys, which was uh, Frank and uh, Joe and John. You know they um, they were terrific because there was still one more Premier League game to play, mm. and I think it was uh, Ancelotti. He said they could come to the game, but they couldn't play, mm. and he wouldn't let them play. So I just said to him, "Would you get the kit on and come out and you know?" Being the team photo to, to add to that, and, and they were terrific. John John Terry gave his boots to a, a disabled fan in, sitting in the um, sitting in a wheelchair, and they stood along that touchline there on the east end, and um, not east end, west end, and, and signed autographs. They were terrific, yeah. really really good. Eh? And um, and t- for them to do that for me was I was really humbled by that. Really really was. Yeah. Yeah. And even Rio, it did Rio have to get permission from Sir Alex and he to play as well, if I remember. Yeah. Yeah. Incredible. I mean, Rio didn't couldn't confirm that he was playing until the morning of the game. Wow. And he rang me up about eleven o'clock on that morning and said, um, I'm still in Manchester. I'm just about to get on the train. Fergie said I can play. Well he said the boss said I can play. And um but I can only play for 20 minutes. So I said, don't matter, just get on that train and get down here, you yeah. know. And so he did, you know, and um, we couldn't get him off the pitch because the ball wouldn't go out of play. So he, <laughs> it was 20 minutes, I ended up nearly 30 minutes because the ball, you know, slow-paced testimonial, the ball wouldn't go out of play. Oh, so, no, he was great, Rio. And, um, but, you know, in the end, you know, Paolo Di Canio, I thought, well, I'd asked Paolo, I'd asked his agent whether he'd come and play. Yeah. And... Um, he immediately said, yes, I'd love to. I thought, I'd have him as a guest player. I just yeah. thought he might put a few few fans on the gate, you know, <laughs> you know, etc. So he said to me, Paolo, when he arrived, um, I said to him, I'll pay, your, I'll pay your fare because he was living in Rome. He said, I'll pay, I'll pay your airfare and I'll put you up in the hotel for the night. And he went, no, 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 he, he, wouldn't, he wouldn't let me do that. Mm. He said, I will play. He said, um, I want to play. Okay. So he arrived and he said, I only want to play for half a, half a game. I'm trying to do an Italian accent, but I can't. <laughs> so I said, no, pal, I don't, I play for 10 minutes. Just get out of there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we come off at half time. And of course, it's just about, can we swap some players over and get everybody on the pitch? So pal, I said, well, you're coming off. He went, no, 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 no. No, I'm not coming off. So I said, well, you said you only play half a game. He said, give me 10 more minutes. He said, I want the adulation of the crowd. That's what he said to me. So <laughs> that's what we had to do. 
Yeah, it must have been really fun because you had all those yeah. different personalities. Very, very emotional guy, Paolo. Yeah, he is. He's a very emotional guy, and 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 again, he's one of those players. There's a few dotted around who just who are the foreign based players who understand West Ham, and, and Paolo was one of them, and that's for sure. Um, and, and I mean, yeah, yeah, you know, definitely. Oh, and obviously, you know, it must be for you as well. It must be because I was talking to Kevin Keane and he said, you know, from a professional perspective, not, you know, part of the West Ham bit for a minute, but from a professional perspective to see so many of your, your, your graduates, so to speak, playing in the game, managing, coaching, it must be so uh, overwhelming, really, when you think about it. When you think, obviously, Frank yeah. at Chelsea and John at, at Villa and stuff and, and Jack yeah. over in uh, Atlanta. Yeah. Yeah, now I'll take obviously now I look back because I've I'm sort of finished at West Ham, so I look back and you know I look back now with immense pride and see all the players that are still playing. You know, even Junior Stanislas. Yeah, Junior. You know, who, who, who was who was a who was a bit of a handful as a youth player because he was a little bit lazy, a little bit too chilled, and a little bit too real, you know laid back. And because I always thought he had great talent, I thought he could have done more and better. He did play in the first team. I think he had a, quite yeah, a few games yeah. in West Ham's yeah. first team. Yeah, he did. yeah. And then obviously he went off and went to Burnley and and uh, when Eddie Howe was at Burnley, he took him to Bournemouth when Eddie got the job at Bournemouth and I bumped into him. And and the, one, the first thing he said to me was, I wish I'd have listened to you when I was 17. <laughs> you see, because I've now realised how, how hard you have to work to, to make it and to get a good living in the game. Yeah. You see, it wasn't until I was a bit older but uh, I've got, you know, I've got a partner, I've got married and I've got children. I've got, I've got responsibilities that I've got a graft at my game. And uh, that gave me great pleasure just to hear that. Yeah. So, uh, you know, sometimes the penny drops a little bit later. Yeah, no, it's true. Yeah. I get that. I get that. When, when do you, when you sort of, as you said, when you sort of, you said you're low, you know, when you're looking for the next player, it, do you, is it like a sixth sense or is it like you go, you know, because cause there, there must be lots of players that you thought were going to make it and dropped off as, as they developed throughout sort of their career. Yeah, yeah I, I think um, the thing is not to get carried away too early, yeah. especially nowadays where we have players coming into the club at eight years of age, nine years of age and actually signing. Um and the, and, and the scouts are saying to me, oh, this player's this, this player's that. And, and I really take that with a pinch of salt. And mm-hmm. I'd go, well, if he's still doing that at 14, I'll get excited. Yeah. So it's about that slow progression. And uh, But, you know, with other players, like you see a Joe Cole come in at 13 years old, mm-hmm. and you think, oh, my God, what, you know, the things this kid can do are unbelievable. And even Stuart Slater, um, you know, his dribbling skills and his tight, close control and, He's turning and running at player skills. And I always kept saying to the coaches, if he can continue to do that as he progresses through the age bands, yeah. so the things he's doing really, really well at, say, 13, 14, mm. if he's doing that at 16, 17, he'll have a chance. Yeah. Because obviously, between that 15 and 18, the game becomes more competitive, it becomes more physical, more physically demanding, you've got to be more athletic, um, pace is very important. Uh, and and the, the technical skills are are what you're about, but you've also got to add all those other things. Yeah. And obviously, being mentally strong and being able to take the criticisms mm-hmm. and the lack of form or the being dropped, etc. So okay. it's not just about the technical ability. So you've got to have an eye for all those things and whether these players can, you know, develop those other other assets that's going to make them sure. the player that you want them to be. Yeah, no, totally. I I, I get that totally, and it, it, even more so now. You know, particularly the the young the youngsters. You know, with everything around sort of lockdown and not playing and being mentally yeah. strong is 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 critical. And obviously, it's, it's difficult because you know you've got to have Zoom calls and things. That's what Kev was saying. You know, yeah, you Zoom. It must be so tricky. Um, it's a bit how I see how teachers are. You know, like you, it's the same. It's exactly the same thing. You know, teachers see sort of bits of you know, a kid might be really gifted in maths, or and they try and sort of encourage that. It must be exactly the same process for you guys. You know, you see a glint, you see a, a got a boy, and you think he's got something. I need to nurture that and make sure he's he's sort of he's, he's yeah. taught, taught the right way. And it must be it must be such yeah. a rewarding process. I think now my role was really. Uh, and, and, and the team around me, I mean, it wasn't just me, no, was it? I mean, the, yeah. the scouting department, Jimmy Hampson, Jimmy Tindall, and people like that, that, that sort of, and that had their scouts around them bringing players to us for us to assess. 
you know, it's, it's, it's a bit of a team. And, you know, I had Peter Braybrook for many years as my assistant, who, who with me and Peter got on really, really well. And Paul Heffer, who's still there at West Ham, I think he comes in one day a week or something, you know, yeah. just uh, looking at the young players. Now, it was a, it's a big, big team effort. But mm. the, the, the thing that's important is that uh, you're not in competition with each other. You're there to help each other. Mm. And you, you're part of a team and you're part of a, and you're all trying to sing from the same song sheet. No one person um, is responsible. It's just a, a team effort. Yeah. You know, I was in the four because I was the coach, you know, and yeah. I was the academy director and I was the, the guy that was on the pitch every day with the players working with them and coaching them. But for, but to get to that point, there's a lot of work that goes on yeah, yeah. before that. So it's, um, it's not just all about me, although uh, I, I suppose... It's like a manager of a football team. You know, if yeah, the team exactly. wins the title, it's the managers. It's not not always his coaching team. You know, yeah. so that's the that's the way it is. And you know, and, you know, I, I don't. And I've said it so many so many people said me you wouldn't have been there forty three years if you didn't know what you were doing. So I, I sort of thought, yeah, fair enough. I suppose I did know what I was doing. <laughs> exactly, and obviously, you know, and and you won won the FA Youth Cup twice as well. You know, in 80, 81 and ninety nine, yeah. and and you know that ninety nine team in obviously that's my my modern era, so to speak, was was yeah. it was an unbelievable. I mean, I remember, remember the game that nine nil, you know, on the aggregate. I remember the the game at Upton Park was incredible. Yeah. The players, the fans around the pitch, they had to yeah. kick open more stands, exactly. and we had Bertie on there before. Um, yeah. And and he was like that was just it was just an amazing day an amazing night that whole sort of team spirit and stuff and uh, and and the players yeah. that went on you know obviously not not just you know the Joes yeah. people, Adam Newton yeah amazing amazing team um so as I said what we what we try well, and do all, is, they all went on and had most they of did. them yeah had careers yeah I know it's, I mean sorry. No, I was about to say, yeah. no, it's not just, and that's what I mean for you. Yeah, you know, it's not just, you know, obviously, we talk about the West Ham players. We talk about, you know, the Joes and the Carricks. And, but obviously, and, and we had Izzy on there. You had Adam Newton. You had, you had Gary Alexander. You had, you know, yeah. Bertie Brady. Yeah, so you had some He's great. Still in the English. He, he had a good career. Yeah. He did. He did. And yeah. that's the thing. It's not just the West Ham, not just the West Ham boys. It's the, it's the careers that have come out of it. And I think that's, that's what I get with West Ham, particularly. You know, when players leave, when, and Frank Lees and, and Joe left and Rio, you know, when, when you see them play for England or Man United or Chelsea, they're still West Ham. <laughs> it's almost like they still got, you still feel yeah. they've got a West Ham kit underneath, you know, and it's, uh, and you yeah. sort of live, you live your life through them. Because obviously we don't win bugger all. So it's nice to see them win, win something, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, it is yeah, what it is. Um, now, as I said, what we try and do with, 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 um, with all the fans we've interviewed and the players is try and do an eleven. You know, picking it. This is going to be really tough for you. I know it is. Um, yeah. We try and keep it to a four-four-two, if we can, just because right. it makes things easier. But I think for you, it, you know, I'm, you know, it could be players you've, you've, you've watched as a fan as well. It might be a bit easier as well for you as well because <laughs> there's so many players that have come through the academy. But maybe a mixture. Yeah. It could be. You've got such a. You've got probably the biggest um, <laughs> players you can pick from. So it'd be the trickiest thing for you. Um, so, so for the for the car eleven, you know, for the who would be in goal? Who would you pick? Well, if 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 I can, can I stick to academy players? Yeah, players yeah. that that I'd work with. Can yeah. I stick to that? Perfect. Perfect. Because obviously, everybody puts Bobby in, Bobby Moore. And if they were, Kirsty if they were around to him. see him, yeah, yeah, if they were around to see him play, if they were around to see him play, and obviously, but for you, me, I'll put I'll put an academy eleven in if I could. Yeah, perfect. If that's Absolutely. okay with you. Of course, it yeah. is, Tony. Now, my, my Achilles heel is really, goalkeeper. Uh, we didn't really produce, or I didn't produce, or worked with a goalkeeper. Mm. My claim to fame as goalkeepers would be Stephen Bywater. Yeah. Because we, we, we bought Stephen Bywater from, um, was it, uh, not Scum, was it Scum for, or? It was a Northern. Up yeah. North, Rochdale, yeah. I think it might have been Rochdale. Rochdale. Can't <laughs> remember. Up, up North. <laughs> up North somewhere. And, um, uh, he obviously, he had an apprenticeship and he, he, he played in the FA Youth Cup team, obviously. So, um, I'd go with, with Stephen Bywater mm. as a, uh, my only academy um, protege, really, yeah. as a goalkeeper. Now, yep. this, the rest of this is going to be so difficult. Yeah, the rest of this is going to be so we'll, difficult. We'll go one at a time. and you, let's, let's go left back. Go on, give me let's go left, left back. back. God, dear. Left back. I'm gonna go. 
because I've got a little bit of an idea who I could play right back. Yeah. I'm going to miss someone out here. I know I am. Of course you are. Of course go, you are. I'm going to go Glenn Johnson, left back. Yes. Yeah. Glenn Johnson, I mean, left back. I mean, I mean he, I, I remember him. He could, he could play there. Yeah, I remember him jumping into the first team. He played like 15, 15, 20 games. And even at that time, you were like, this guy's, this guy's going to be great. Yeah. You know, you just get that. And you get, obviously, you get that feeling from a watching. Great pace. Great oh, amazing strength. player. So strong. And you get that. And I mean, you get that, yeah. obviously, when you're looking at a player. And as a fir- as as a fan, when when the boy when the academy boys comes in, you get you want you know you get a feeling straight away, you know, and you go, yeah, this guy's good. We've got to be good to get into the first team yeah. to start off with. And, and Glenn was just like lightning. Yeah. We didn't have that really quick lightning quick. Yeah, we didn't have that. Yeah. As, and so it was it was brilliant. Right, we'll go left back. Well, I think that was the revelation. That was the was. revelation when he came in the team. Yeah, Glenn Road was the manager, and he came to me and he said, "I'm struggling because I had, that year had a load of injuries." Yeah. He said, I haven't got a right back. Who, who can Glenn Johnson do the job? And I said to him, you'll never know until you put him in. Yeah. That was the actual words I said. You'll never know, Glenn, until you put him in. And he put him in and the rest, you know, he, he was a revelation. He was. Yeah. He really was. Right. Terrific. We'll put, we'll put Glenn Johnson left back. Let's go right back then. You said you've got an idea for right back. Right back. Uh, just to try and include some good defenders. Um, I'm going to go Anton Ferdinand at right back. Yeah. Good shout. I'm going to miss someone here. Yeah. Of course you will. I'm not being funny. 40, gonna, 41 gonna, years. 41 years. You're going yeah. to miss someone. And so, but the idea is, you yeah. know, we, you know, it's and and it's the same when you interview the players. You know, they go, oh, you know, oh, you know, left back, and they go, oh yeah, well, I played with, you know, Georgie Paris, and I'm definitely missing someone else. Oh, you yeah. Know, later George on, a bit. Paris oh, was oh, another one. I mean, yeah. Yeah, I worked with George, so I was he was in my youth team. So and Kevin, Kevin yeah. King, so. I could have either of those, George at left back. That's what I mean. right back, I mean, I've tossed a coin, you know, it's one of them. It's, it's, it's what it is. So I'll, I'll have, what I'll do is I'll have 20 subs. I'll have 20 subs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they can all get on the pitch. We'll have two teams and we'll be all right. Okay, we'll put Anton at right back. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, obviously Anton came in and, you know, it, it, it must have been weird because obviously, you know, with, with your brother being your brother, um, did you ever, was there ever any sort of... Yeah, I think, yeah, I think that's why... I, on, carry on. Uh, it's, it's difficult for Anton because he was always living in his brother's shadow. Yeah, yeah. And everybody always compared him with his brother, um, and it, it, it was tough for him. And um, so you know, he was strong mentally, mm. and, I, and I think he came through that. Him and Elliot Ward came through together yeah. with Alan Pardew and put him in the team when we were in the championship mm. and formed a very good partnership for that latter part of the season, which got us um, to the playoff final. Mm. But um, when we beat, um, who did we beat at, at um, Preston, Cardiff? Preston. God, North Preston. Yeah. When we played Preston at Cardiff, it was Preston, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. We lost yeah, the Palace. It. We lost the Palace the year we before. Got up, we, yeah. That's Palace, right. Yeah. So anyway, so Anton at right back. Yeah. yeah that, and I'll, I'll put Anton in there. Okay, centre backs in. So who's going to be centre backs? I think I go with Rio and John Terry. If I can claim John Terry, because John yeah. was a West Ham player, he was yeah. a signed academy player. Yeah. So I go and I go Rio and uh, John Terry. Although John didn't play for our first team, you now we're using a little bit of artistic license here. So yeah, <laughs> put John and Rio there. Yeah. Yeah. Just put the England pair, England, you know, centre back pair in for England, how many games? England yeah. captains at centre back. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Okay, let's go midfield then. Let's go. Um, let's go left midfield. I'm not allowed to call it left wing. Left midfield. What's left? Midfield? Left side midfield. God help us. I'd go Joe Cole. Yeah. Joe Cole, left side midfield. Yeah. And obviously, yeah, as you said, from a from a 13 year old, it wasn't just you that knew about it. It seemed every everyone in the world knew about this this kid. You know, coming yeah. through. It, 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 yeah. I mean, I, I spoke to Joe. A little while ago, um, without plugging, I'm, I'm, in, I'm, at the, I'm at the latter end of writing a book about my 43 odd years. Wow. Basically, my autobiography. So I've yeah. been going around interviewing lots of my ex players. And Joe really said, like, his mum and dad weren't into football. Um, and he was just playing football in the playground, really, and in the school. And he didn't realise there was leagues and a professional game he didn't realise he just he loved to play football and he just honed his skills on watching Italia 
the Italian football on Sunday afternoons when it used to be on the TV, Channel yeah. 4 or something. And he, he'd, he'd watch a player, see a great skill, and go in the playground and, and copy it and wouldn't be satisfied until he perfected it. So that's how he honed all his technical skills. So that was, that was an interesting insight. But yeah, lots of clubs... Um, Lots of clubs knew about Joe, was interested in Joe, but um, he just felt, he, he just said he felt comfortable at West Ham. He liked the training, he liked the atmosphere, he liked the people. There was always a smile in, a smile and a friendly face. And that goes a long way and he, yeah. you'd be surprised. No, I yeah. can imagine. So, so Joe on the left, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and famously, wasn't it, was it Fergie used to call him the magician? Didn't he? I think he was like, he's yeah, yeah. how's the magician getting on? It's like, oh God, when well, you've got him, yeah. must have been so much pressure on, on Joe as well, you know, having been labeled, he was labeled like the next Gazza, weren't he? And, and we had to be yeah, signed, exactly. him on, yeah. signed him on the pitch when he was 16 and we was playing Chelsea. We were playing That's Chelsea right. that game. I remember that. It was against Chelsea as well. So, uh, yeah, it was sort of, I think that was designed to sign him on that pitch on that day against Chelsea. Yeah. Because it was Chelsea. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then, then preemptive. Exactly. <laughs> well, we'll put Joe on the left. Let's go right midfield then. Let's go to the other side. Right midfield. Oh, yeah. Go on, right midfield. I'm going to miss someone, aren't I? Of course you are. Um, let's go. Kevin Keane. Yeah. Put Keane in, yeah. Kevin Keane as a winger, up and down, full of energy. Mm. Great yeah. guy, lovely Kevin guy Keane. as well. And obviously, yeah, yeah under, under six, under eighteen coach, isn't he now? So, which is great to see. Yeah, uh, the way, I brought him back into the club, and then he left off, and then he come back again. And yeah, yeah. just he's like a yo-yo, weren't he? To be honest, um, Good guy, Kev. I mean, he's done twenty years, man and boy, so to speak, as well at the club. So, and that, and that seems to be the way at the moment. You yeah. know, it seems that yeah. It seems that boys is doing. Yeah, I'm glad that they've, 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 they've got round. I'm, I'm glad they've done yeah. that because um, they've brought they've brought players in now and uh, ex players in and yeah. I think they've got Cole and Cole doing a little bit of mentoring and yeah. Kevin's taking the team and obviously Stevie Potts is with the 23s yeah. and I, I think that's good to no, just to, good. to have someone who's who's been there and done it and. Uh, and I think that's 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 so interesting. It's it's true, and you've got obviously um, that they've done that. You got Con- Konchesky's yeah. in. But you can't and... you can't what you can't do is which. Yeah, Paul Paul Conch, yeah. and he could have been left back Conch, yeah. yeah. But um, you know you, what you can't do is you mustn't do it is erase history because if you erase the history, you know you you've got to know where the club was and where it came from to to develop the future as much as you want to get in the, the so called modern world in the, within the modern game. You mustn't forget your past. And I think it's so, so important, especially with a club like West Ham. Of course, absolutely. And as you said, I mean, and I, and I think they're sort of bringing that back in. Even someone like Kevin Nolan, who wasn't, wasn't, a, wasn't a, you know, a, an academy boy, but he was a captain no, no. at West Ham. And, he, yeah. and it's so important, particularly for West Ham. Yeah, I, I, think, think, I, think that, I think that was a very good appointment from David Moyes to do that. Um, you know, he, he sort of took the place where... Stuart Pierce was the time before yeah. Yeah. that um, ex West Ham, not an academy product, but he knew the club and knew what it was all about, knew the fans and expectations. You now, Kev went through some good years with Sam, you know, promotions and yeah. st- establishing ourselves back in the Premier League and um, with Sam Allardyce. So, yeah, I think it's a good move from whoever instigated it. I'm sure it was. Uh, Probably Ricky Duncan, who's in charge now. Ricky, who's in charge, the academy manager. And on a side with Ricky, he, he was a schoolboy at West Ham. Didn't quite make the grade, but I coached him when he was a schoolboy at West Ham. <laughs> it's, it's the circle of life, isn't it? It's the circle of life, yeah, Tony. Yeah. So right. that's good. Ricky knows West Ham. Yeah, yeah anyway, definitely. Let's, 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 let's carry on. Let's go midfield. Let's, two centre midfielders. Who are we going to have you as two centre midfields? We've got to have Frank yeah. and Carrick. Yeah, it's all, it's quite think, an easy one, isn't it? I think they pick themselves really, and it's just you know the fact that a lot of that team are so high hope, high profile because of their the careers and the England careers they had afterwards. Yeah, um, yeah. Nope. So up front, up front. I, I think if we, uh, I think you've got to go Tony Cotty, Jermaine Defoe. I think, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Very very similar players in different eras. 
True. Um, very true. I've, always, I've always likened both of them to very similar in terms of their their strengths. Mm. Only ever needing one or two touches in the box. You know, didn't miss many chances. But if they did miss chances, weren't afraid to take the next one. Didn't freeze. And I think that was the um, the ultra confidence you need um, as a striker or any player for that matter. Because you don't always have ups in a game. You, you have a lot of downs as well. And have that strength of, of character and that belief in your own ability to be able to bounce back from that and say, I'm better than that. I'll score the next one. I'm not, I've missed that one, but I'll score the next one. Yeah. Uh, I did a little bit of work just as an example. You know, that, um, I, did, I, I, I did a little bit of work, only on a very casual basis, for uh, EA Sports, which are um, you know, the video games, FIFA 20 and all that. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. One of their, um, and I, I, had to, I had to do 10 sessions with players that were, were signed to uh, EA, EA Sports. And I, I interviewed Wayne Rooney. And I said to Wayne, I said to him, uh, we did a little coaching session. And I said, we sat down and I said to him, what, um, what makes you a good striker? Or what makes a good striker? And he said to me, stay calm in the box. No, it sounds so sim- simple mm. and silly. Mm. Up, but analyse it. When that ball comes, a lot of players, the chance is coming, and just prior to receiving it, they, they, get, they get on edge. They get yeah. on edge. But he says, no, just stay calm. Stay calm and use the ability that you know you got. So stay calm. Here it comes. Bang up. This one's going in the box. This one's going in the goal. Bang. And, and when he said that, it, it was so simplistic, but it resonated with me so much. And I thought, kept thinking about it. I thought, He's so right. He's so right. And I think Jermaine and Tony had that. Yeah. They had that. Stayed calm. Even his first goal, Tony, I can see it now. Header off the crossbar, bounce, Tottenham, stayed calm. Here it is. Bang. Yeah. Header, goal. Um, Jermaine, you know, you look at most of Jermaine's goals. He's never flustered. If he even even needs, you know, the ball comes to him, he gets it, shifts it, shoots, Mm -hmm. you know, two touches. Um, They stay calm. And stay uh, confident. Yeah. That Sorry means, for that little aside, but it yeah. is relevant. No, no, no. Honestly, no, no. Exactly. And you're, you're so true. And and yeah, I don't. I never really thought about the Deco, uh, Defoe's or Cotty sort of sort of comparables, but they are. They're very, you know, very similar in terms of very similar. Stature yeah, very similar. as well. And yeah, but uh... stature, you know, <laughs> prolific goal scorers. You know, both were left the club and played for England. Yep. So yeah. Yeah, oh, it's a good shot, and that's a that's a nice. So I must admit, I must have missed, I must have missed oh, some you, really you, good players you, here. You've missed hundreds so, of players, probably, Tony. So, I, yeah. I apologise for those that are not in the team. <laughs> they'll, they'll be in the book, though, Tony. Probably won't they? They'll be in your book. Yeah, they'll be in the book. Yeah, so in that's, book, yeah, yeah. They'll, they'll, they'll get their they get their five minutes of fame in the book anyway. Tony, yeah, exactly. it's been a, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much for your time. Okay, uh, it's been lovely. No some problem. Any, anytime. Thank anytime. you. And Enjoyed it. Brilliant, thank you, and obviously thank you to everyone for watching as well. You know, you know, I'm so humble with all the all the all the support for the channel and stuff. So you know, keep it up, like, share, subscribe, uh, and until next time, for me and Tony, take care, everyone. Stay safe. See you soon. See you, everyone. Bye bye. Good. All the best. <laughs>